This video looks at another important part of uh, equality and diversity law and uh, the way that it can be employed in the workplace. And uh, we're going to be looking at this idea of positive action. So first of all, we need to understand what positive action might be. In the UK, quotas and positive discrimination are illegal. So this means that no employer can have a list uh, where they have decided what types of people um, should work in their organisation. Employers can, however, apply positive action in their recruitment and their pr promotion processes. And there's a few reasons why employers would do this. It might be to address underrepresentation in the workforce. So if your workforce is predominantly female, for example, you might want to encourage uh, male applications, applications from men. It might be to enable or encourage people to overcome or minimize a disadvantage. So you might understand that it can be harder for people with disabilities uh, to find jobs in this country and so you might uh, work to enable more applications from uh, disabled workers. It might also be to meet different needs. So your, the clients of your company uh, might come from a range of different backgrounds and that might include uh, needing to have a better understanding of different languages, of different cultures and customs, and also just to make your staff uh, more representative of the people that they serve. This might also be applying positive action to uh, enable or encourage participation from particular groups in the community. So, what would positive action look like? Steps that employers could take might include encouraging a particular group to apply for a job or helping people with a particular protected characteristic to perform to the best of their ability. This might be through things like training and support that's offered uh, predominantly to a targeted group. It might be special open days or it might be things like work-related travel costs being covered by the company. I'm going to look at two different examples now. Uh, the first example here um, is the case of a local fire service. So the fire service identifies from the data that it's been collecting that women are underrepresented as firefighters. The service makes it clear the next time that it's recruiting for new firefighters that application, applications from women are particularly welcome and it holds a special open day for potential women applicants at which they can meet other women firefighters. However, the fire service can't guarantee that all of the women who apply will get through the initial stages of the application process regardless of their suitability. So they haven't earmarked these particular jobs, they're just making efforts to make it easier and um, more attractive for women to come into the service. In the second example, um, a housing advice service has no Bangladeshi employees, even though it's located in an area that has a really high Bangladeshi popla population. So the next time that a job comes up, there are two candidates of equal merit, so two people who have the same experience, who have the same qualification for the job. One of these candidates is Bangladeshi and the other isn't. So in this circumstance, the advice service could actually offer the job uh, to the Bangladeshi candidate under the positive action provisions. And in that case, the non-Bangladeshi candidates wouldn't be able to claim racial discrimination. So the company has chosen to uh, address the balance and the needs of their client base, the people who use the housing advice service, by employing somebody from that community. So in the same case as with the firefighters, 
an employer can't have, it's illegal for them to have a general policy of treating people with a relevant protected characteristic more favourably in connection with recruitment, but it can make particular decisions and particular actions that can help to enable uh, people from these different protected characteristic groups. If you want to find out more about how this works in practice and with lots more examples and guidance, I'd recommend these two websites. So looking at the Equality and Human Rights Commission, Positive Action and Recruitment Documents, and also at the Museum Association's Diversified Toolkit. So both of these things have been developed uh, for employers and for employees to understand how positive action works more easily.